It's Friday night, and you know what that means. We're live this week, pal. I'm John Renton with my review of AEW Rampage. And oh boy, that news from CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk. Kind of put a bit of a downer on this episode, didn't it? Now, he gave good and bad news. The bad news is, unfortunately, he has to get surgery, so he's got to go away for a while because he's got injuries, especially one severe one, because if he's going to take time off after just becoming AEW World Champion and basically interrupting this one last run, because let's be honest, he ain't got a lot of time left, and he knows it. You can see it in his face every time he's in the ring. The good news is he will come back, and we're going to have an interim champion. And boy, they found a convoluted way to describe it, but maybe it'll end up turning out for the best. How long do you think CM Punk, CM, okay, enough of that. How long do you think Punk will be out? Answers in the comments, please. So, Excalibur, Taz, and the Grand Wizard himself, Chris Jericho, on commentary. The rest of this show, really, it helped with a hot crowd. It was nice that they were in Ontario, California, Ontario, CA, no, not that one. Um, the Lucha Bros with Alex Abrahantos took on the Bucks. They're already in the ring, and Adam Cole, baby, was on commentary, and oh boy, flipty dipty oopsie doopsie shit. They just did video game stuff, and it was back and forth, da 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 Flippy hairs Rick, knocks to not count the motherfucking tags like he always does. Look, it was a car crash, the fans were into it, I will certainly say it, these are all tremendous athletes, but... I've praised some of their matches in the past. This was just more of the same car crash bullshit with people kicking out of every goddamn thing, doing moves to each other, and sometimes moves to their own goddamn partner, which is so fucking stupid looking, that nobody should be able to get up from any of this shit. But it was super no-sell parte, and eventually, the Bucks won. And there was also a goofy... Um, pin that was supposed to be broken up, but Penta didn't get there on time, so they had to let Phoenix up. But then they won with the trigger. Hooray! The Bucks got their win back. Then again, though, it is apparently, according to Excalibur, 5-4. to four. The Lucha Bros have the advantage in this seemingly never-ending series of matches. So I expect the Bucks to win the next one to make it a 5-on-5, five five, and then possibly the Lucha Bros win in an exploding steel cage match this time. I kid, I kid, the match was all action. It wasn't for me, but I know some people liked it. And then <clears throat> Starks and Hobbs um, beat up two jobbers. They interrupt with a pre-tape that goes pretty much through the match and they come right back as Hobbs gets the victory. Now, apparently they want to go after the tag gold. It was very, very badly <clears throat> like timed. Why didn't you put the pre-tape on there as they were making their entrance? You could have done that. Oh, well, whatever. Kara Hogan, uh, with Red Velvet, Jay Cargill, and Stokely, uh, who is the same height sitting down or standing up. It's fucking mind-blowing. Took on Athena. Athena is new with wings, as in her jacket. Actually, a pretty cool jacket there. Um, it's like if Icarus didn't fly too close to the sun or had made his wings out of metal. Then again, if Icarus had been able to make his wings out of metal, that would have been very interesting since they didn't have wings of metal back whenever Icarus actually existed. Moving on from history that may or may not have fucking happened. Yeah, Athena and Kara Hogan had a competitive match and it shouldn't have been competitive. That's nothing against Kara Hogan. That's nothing against Athena. <laughs> I know they're trying to hotshot this thing by having Athena take on Jade for the TBS Championship. They're trying to build this quickly. You should have given Athena somebody quick to beat in a couple minutes. And then you could have saved this for a little bit later. You could have given Athena a few wins. Built her up. Because, yes, she's over because she came from WWE television and she felt slighted and everything. She's, you know, fresh coat of paint here. She is talented. She had a name before she got to WWE, but she obviously rose to prominence there. I will say that she needs to get a new finisher, as good as it looks. The Eclipse, or whatever the fuck she's calling it now, that stunner off the top, her spine's going to hate her. Every bone, every nerve in her body's going to hate her, and she's been doing that move for a lot of fucking years. Everybody knows their bodies well, but <clears throat> holy fucking shit. Um, it was a little bit too competitive, especially for Athena's first match. Had to spend a few weeks, maybe even a couple months in the thing. They can build this stuff along. They have enough women that they bring in for dark... You're telling me they couldn't have given Athena a quality win, couldn't add her and Kira pro, uh, promo this, maybe even build it up for a rampage in two weeks? Hell, that show needs all the boosts and ratings that it can get. Nevertheless, House of Black vignette, and uh, this is shit. And nothing against Julia Hart. It's nothing against anybody involved here. Like, they're trying to make it dark and spoopy, and it's not good. And then CM Punk, 
CM Punk, CM Punk comes down. He looks very upset, obviously, because he said he was going to keep battling until the wheels fell off. And unfortunately, the good news and bad news, good news is, well, you know, or the bad news, he needs surgery and one of the wheels is damaged. <clears throat> but it's just a bump in the road. He was going to relinquish the championship. Tony Khan said, no, this is a bump in the road. You are going to go get the surgery. You, you have nine days, nine days to get the surgery. Get, no, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. This can't fight. God, to, how coked up do you think Tony Khan was? Was he as coked up as he was at the media scrum? Holy fucking hell. But anyway, he um, is going to go away, but he's going to remain the champion. They're going to make an interim champion. This is a case where I don't mind them making an interim champion because there are different ways they can go about it. Um, he will come back, and I don't know how long he's going to be out for. I hope that it ends up just being something where he can recover, but he is 42, and he's had injuries. He had, you know, I think he had like a bad knee injury sometime in, it was sometime around like the end, like Survivor Series 2012, he had to get some kind of surgery because he had like bad stuff in his knee. And then he had to come back and compete in a TLC match against Ryback, uh, like on the first Raw of 2013, and that didn't work out all that well. And then he was clearly injured, took time off after WrestleMania 29. The whole point is, Punk has his injuries and he has a short timetable. I cannot imagine that CM Punk is going to be wrestling in any time in 2025. If he is wrestling past All Out of 2024, I will be amazed. And credit to him for coming back. He's never been my absolute favorite wrestler. He's not the best wrestler in the world. But he certainly works hard. And he can be a boost for the television. He can be a boost for pay-per-views. If he's not out for too goddamn long and they can make this thing work, that's fine. But the whole interim champion thing that I'll go over here in a minute. I feel really bad for Punk and I hope that he recovers 100% regardless of how long it takes for him to come back. And then Dante Martin with Matt Seidel took on Sky with Ethan and Dan Lambert, the sheepish lion Dan Lambert. If you've noticed that I always skip over the whole Mark Henry segment where he says a few lines, you know why I do that? Mark Henry is one of the most ineffective signings that they have on camera. Off, off screen, I'm sure that he helps by coaching people. And I'm sure he does great there. He doesn't need to be an on-air talent. But Mark Henry and Paul White <clears throat> came at a big price. I just don't think that they've been worth it. They've been around the company for over a year, and I don't really think that they're necessarily worth it. My opinion. You know, because, hey, we got another guy from Vince. Well, hey, if you got Vince's guy, that only means that he's done with them. They ain't drawn, or otherwise you wouldn't have Vince's guy. That was Larry Sabisco in regards to WCW signing and swallowing up a whole bunch of goddamn people. And he wasn't wrong, <laughs> even if the people have talent. That being said, Dante and Sky had a decent enough match. Um, Dante can be a big star. I like Scorpio Sky. I'm probably one of the few Scorpio Sky fans that talks about it because I always see so much hate for the guy. And that's a shame because I'm not saying he could ever be a world champion on AEW or WWE television, but if they just pick a focus and stick with him, he could be very, very good. <laughs> um, they make the announcement, uh, during the show that there's going to be a battle royal to kick off Dynamite. The winner of that takes on John Moxley in a main event since he's technically the number one contender. And then whoever wins that goes on the forbidden door to crown a new AEW World Heavyweight Champion, or an interim champion, as it were. And I guess they're going to take on Hiroshi Tanahashi. My guess is it's going to be John Moxley, because John Moxley wanted his hands on Hiroshi Tanahashi. Imagine if they had Hiroshi Tanahashi win the AEW Interim Championship. That would be mind-blowing. It will be Moxley. Don't get me wrong, if they somehow slotted MJF into that goddamn Battle Royal and he <coughs> beat Moxley and then went on to beat Tanahashi, that would be something. I have a feeling they're going to try to eke this thing out a little bit. He'll try to interrupt, he'll try to do stuff, but he'll get maybe drug out of the Battle Royal and whatever. There's a lot of different ways they can go about this. they got to do this shit right, though. And uh, Dante lost to a TKO, and it seemed like Scorpio hurt his ankle. I hope that he's all right, and it was just, you know, uh, it was just a tweak and that he didn't sprain it or anything. We don't need more injuries. I like Scorpio. But interesting episode of Rampage. Hopefully Punk's going to be healed. And interesting to see where they're going to go with the interim championship. The rest of the card was sort of just there. Agree, disagree with what I said? Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rettlin. I'll see you soon.